As you might know, me and Jazz love to travel. We had big ambitions to go on another epic trip this year, but with COVID limiting our options, we decided to go back to the drawing board. That's when we purchased our mate Viv, a converted 2011 Vauxhall Vivaro. After a few tweaks, Viv was ready for an epic road trip, and all we needed was the perfect destination. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy the journey. One of the best drives you'll probably ever do, but this scenery, it's mind blowing. And in Scotland, do what the locals do. Get your ass out, mate. Good fun. This is our adventure around Scotland's North Coast 500. Good morning. Uh, it's day one here on our adventure in Scotland, and we're in Inverness in the luxurious Travelodge car park. So we drove up here yesterday from where we live back in Staffordshire, which was a pretty long drive, to be honest. I think the sat nav said it was about seven hours and ten minutes, but we stopped off. And how long did it take? Forever. Forever. Probably like nine hours or something like that. Yeah, we're here now. So Inverness is the first stop. Um, it's where actually you start the North Coast 500. We're going to do it anti-clockwise. A lot of people do it clockwise, but the things I've read online basically say that if you do it anti-clockwise, all the best scenery is on the West Coast. So we're going to start up the East Coast. We're saving the best till last, basically. If you're coming to do the North Coast 500 and you find yourself in Inverness, um, obviously we're near Loch Ness. So that's the first place we're going to visit. I don't think it's a traditional stop on the North Coast 500. Sorry, sorry. sorry. That's all right, Chaz has just <laughs> bursted out sorry. the bagpipes. <laughs> so yeah, we're going to stop at Loch Ness. Um, I think it's about a 20 minute drive from here, so not too far. Jazz is horrified, absolutely horrified by me saying all that YouTube shit. Um, so yeah, if you've got a YouTube account, please subscribe to our channel, uh, like the video, and comment below if you want to come to Scotland where exactly you're going to come if you've been to Scotland where is your favourite place so yeah let's fire up the engine and we'll go to Loch Ness okay so we've arrived at Loch Ness the lock itself is like 23 miles long but I think most of the tourist stuff is the Inverness side I could be wrong because I haven't really looked into it too much um, but we've just passed the town um, I'm not going to even try and pronounce it but I'll put it up on the screen and there's plenty of hotels and B&Bs there's a campsite there if you're in your camper van um, and there's a lot of Loch Ness monster themed attractions there's something called Nessie Land there's a Loch Ness visitor centre uh, so yeah, if you're into Loch Ness Monster and all that sort of stuff, um, definitely come down here. Places we wanted to have a quick look at was this Urquhart Castle. I don't even know if I'm saying this right because a lot of these Scottish words are like well beyond my mental capacity. Uh, but it's a nice castle on the loch. Uh, I think it's an old ruin, um, but they don't let dogs in. It doesn't open until 9.30. Uh, so we're definitely not going to go in there. So I've just flown the drone and uh, yeah, got a few nice shots. Yeah, I think we're going to move on to the next place now. I don't think the locals in the village here are too happy with mine and Jazz's behaviour this morning. So we best get on the road. Arch. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so we've moved on from Loch Ness and uh, we're now at the Fairy Glen, which is on the Black Isle. Uh, again, it's another stop off potentially if you're doing the North Coast 500. It just depends how much time you've got really. It's quite easy to get here. Um, it was about a 30 minute drive from Loch Ness. This is a nice little woodland walk. We've got streams either side and hopefully at the end there should be some nice waterfalls. So if you want to get at one with nature, I think this is the place to come.
so we're just walking back to the car. Uh, the fairy grant was just pretty epic, to be honest. I think Jazz has just said, like, the best waterfall we've seen in the whole of the UK. Uh, we haven't seen many, but that was that was awesome. And if you do come here, um, make sure that you go up the steps. You think you're coming to the main falls, go up the steps, and then there's an even bigger one at the back. Uh, a few people might miss out on that, so just a little tip. But yeah, that was awesome. Made our last stop of the day. Um, the campsite that we're staying at tonight is called Fortrose Bay, and it's literally just around the corner from where we are now. So at the minute, we're at Channon Roy Point, and if you can hear me over the kettle, it's a famous point for uh, two reasons. One is the lighthouse, and one is the dolphin spotting, which we've just gone and done. I've seen a couple of dolphins, which was pretty cool. And now, it's the highlight of everybody's day, it's lunchtime. So, along my shelf of glory here, uh, we've got every type of pot noodle you could ever imagine. You beak out of me dog's biscuits. He's eating your dinner, Arch. Very seagull. He thinks he loves I am. Good Hello, morning. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Cheer up, you crumpy kid. Hello, good morning. It's day two, and uh, last night we stayed here at Fortrose Bay Campsite which is right on the sea, so waking up with a sea view was something I don't think we've ever done like that before. It's a nice morning this morning anyway, and we're gonna head off now uh, to grab a couple of bits from the shop, and then we're heading to Rogie Falls. recommend to stop off it's only five minutes down the hill uh, from the car park so it's not too strenuous yeah really picturesque apparently uh, in later in the summer um, you can watch the salmon trying to jump up the waterfall uh, part of their migration or spawning whatever it is they do so I think that would be that would be quality good times Okay, we're at waterfall number two for the day. Uh, this is Falls of Shin and their sparkly new visitor centre. Uh, it doesn't look open yet, but it literally looks brand new. Uh, so this is the second waterfall of the day. We're 30 miles away from Falls of Rogi or Rogi Falls, whatever it was called. Um, it's kind of in the direction of the way we're heading north, uh, the next place, Doorknock. So if you are doing the North Coast 500, it might be worth a stop off. Pulled over. Pulled over because there's a sign saying Bona Bridge, which is obviously this little village. And someone beneath the sign, in typical Scottish uh, humour, has written Woman Sucks Cocks. Right. So, oh. welcome. Did you to just get beeped at? Huh? I think you did. Welcome to Bona Bridge. 
So it's morning three and um, we've not long woke up. Uh, we're staying in Dornoch, which is where the Royal Golf Course is. Supposedly one of the best golf courses in the world. So if you're into your golf, you'll know where we are. But yeah, we stayed on the campsite. It's very basic. It didn't have a view like the place we stayed in Fort Trose, but it was it was clean, tidy. Uh, the owners were really friendly. So quite a good play on that front. We've just packed up and moved along down to the beach here at Dornoch, um, which looks absolutely massive. Yeah, so the beach looks pristine, yellow sands, it looks really clean, and it goes on for miles and miles. So we're just gonna walk the dog and uh, yeah, see what it's about. And if a trip down to the beach wasn't nice enough, you can treat yourself afterwards by a stop off at Cocoa Mountain, which apparently is the world's best hot chocolate. So we're gonna head back to the van now, jump into town and see if it really is the world's best hot chocolate. I don't know how we'd know though, because... I'd, I'd know, don't you worry, I'd know. <laughs> So, We've got to get a white one. Yeah. Is that white? Is it that white cho chocolate? I think it is. Enjoy. Okay. Thank you. It's probably the best I've had, for Whoa. sure. Whoa. That's a flavour that's undescribable to the human taste. That is next level hot chocolate. It's very rich. It's rich. If you like, I mean, if you don't like hot chocolate, no, that's, then that, then is, that, you... is, that is hot chocolate. Yeah. They should probably sell it at Marks and Spencers or somewhere. No, honestly, that is banging hot chocolate. Oh, look, I've got like the white chocolate stuff. Lick it. <laughs> yeah, it is think, white chocolate. Do you think it's got white chocolate in it? Yeah, I think it's a mix of white and normal. I don't know, but it took it took a long time to make it anyway, but. That is incredible. Yeah. If you come here to Dornock or Dornock, whatever the fuck it's called. Dorf Don't be rude. <laughs> Get a hot chocolate. Right. Cheers. So we've just stopped at Brora Beach. Uh, it's about a 20 minute drive from Dornock. And um, we park on the golf club. We share the same beach car park as the golf club. And uh, if you just walk down, there's obviously the Highland Cow, or the Highland Coo, as they call them up here. And then this unbelievable beach, which stretches for miles and miles. I mean, there can't be many better beaches in the UK. The sand is just perfectly yellow and white sand. There's nobody on it. I mean, literally, there cannot be many more picturesque beaches in the UK. It's stunning. Yeah, obviously it's raining at the minute, but uh, that's Scotland. One minute it's raining, next minute it's snowing, the next minute it's sunny. So we're continuing north on the NC500 and um, we've drove from Brora. We're now at Wick and that stretch of road took about an hour. I think it was about 30, 40 miles potentially. Um, but the scenery was just awesome. So we've just pulled into this little retail park. I don't know how Jazz has managed to find some clothes to buy, um, but she has done. If there's a clothes shop, she'll probably find it. So the new look here is probably a good shout if you need a jumper or something if you're a bit colder uh, at night. Um, here comes Jazz now and she'll somehow convince me that everything she's just bought is related to the trip or justified for one reason or another. I'm going to love to hear this. So continuing on our day of world's first. So we've had the world's best hot chocolate and now we're going to go to the world's shortest street. There you go. Are you excited for the world's shortest street? I can't wait. So it might not look like an actual street, but that bit of building there, the hotel, it says Ebenezer Place. I think it's six foot nine, and it's officially the world's shortest street. So there you go. Not what we were expecting, but tick it off the bucket list, I suppose. So we've just stopped off just outside of Wick and uh, this is the castle of Oldwick and it looks old. It doesn't look 
much like a castle anymore. Now we're going to hit on the road um, we're going to John O'Groats, the northern leadmost point of the UK. Um, I think it's going to be about 30 minutes from here so definitely worth stopping off at Castle Sinclair on the way up to John O'Groats, 100%. Please, in your own time. Look, I've got an angry dog. I've got a sheep dog. See you later. Oh yeah, sheep. So right now in this precise location, at this precise moment in time, me and Jazz and Archie of course, are sat on the northernly most part of mainland Britain. We're at John O'Groats, we're at the viewpoint by the lighthouse which is behind me, and we're looking out to sea and it is, it is incredible. We can see the Orkney Islands straight ahead of us, a few miles that way. Beautiful blue seas, it's just great. Feels good to be here. I'm on top of the country, man. I am literally stood on top of the country. I am on the top of the country. And it's pretty glorious. Look at that, just look at that. So to the man or woman who kindly disinfects the John O'Groats posts that probably has millions of hands on it each year, I do apologise, Archie needed to relieve himself. Archie had a pesh. A pesh right up the pool, mate. Okay. Arch, what you got? What you got, son? You got a bone? So yeah, we're here at Sorry. John O'Groats camping and caravan in sight and uh, great views over the sea. Electric hookup, I think it costs us 25 quid for the night, so if you bring in a camper or caravan, that's what you need to know. They also do tents here as well, if you're going to bring your tent. So, it's been an incredible day. Um, we've we've seen some great places. And it's actually been a really good day. Yeah, 100%. Day one was epic, day two was epic, day three has just been incredible. It's going to be a really good night. So, yeah, we will catch you tomorrow. And when you come to Scotland, there's no better way to start the day than a nine brew. You get me? Good morning, day four on the North Coast 500. We're just parked up at the John O'Groats car park. Uh, we've just been for a bit of breakfast at the cafe place at the front. Really tasty, highly recommend. We went to the Christmas shop and bought a bauble. And the woman who runs the gift shop slash Christmas shop was really friendly, as is pretty much everybody that you come across. The Scottish people just seem overly friendly they are really friendly. really friendly and helpful and appreciate you being here that's the, the main thing so we've got two dough pass cakes that we're going to eat somewhere along the way today first stop off of the day duncan's b head something like that duncan's big head nice one yeah there's two big sea stacks we'll see if we can get some nice photos etc uh, and then we're making our way west so we're going to head along the, the north coast in the west direction and stopping off at a few places so yeah looks like it's going to be another good day in Scotland
you're a big fan of beaches like me and Jazz, you'll absolutely love this one. This is Dummett Bay and it's a 10 mile drive from John O'Groats. Uh, so we're heading west and we're heading towards Furso and here we have this incredible beach. Probably a couple of miles long, beautiful yellow and white sand beach. And the sea itself is like the Mediterranean, it's like blue. Probably won't be going for a dip today because it's like eight degrees and the wind is blowing pretty damn cold, but yeah. Cracking beach, mate. Cracking beach. So we've come to this place, it's called Straffy Beach, and I think uh, there isn't a way of parking directly there. You have to park here in this wee lay-by uh, and then walk down there. But when we get over the brow of this hill, Jazz is gonna be in for a surprise because I've just had a quick look and it looks wee pucker, mate. It looks pucker. Is that good Scottish? Yeah, thank you. So. Then. Every beach is incredible. Every beach is incredible, but that one, wow. Incredible. The but water was blue, ugh. the sand was white and yellow. Jazz said, is this the Philippines or Indonesia? Because that was just, wow. There's a graveyard right there. Oh yeah, there's a graveyard right there. And I right would here. be happy if I died now. And, and Jazz would be was happy. obviously buried there. Jazz would be happy if she died now because she wanted to get buried there. But the problem with that is, me and Archie would have to dig the holes put you in. And right. I haven't got a spade. Right. Archie doesn't really dig what, like normal have to be dogs. A big hole? It would have to be a hole big enough for you. And <gasps> What? You're digging yourself a hole right oh, now. Oh, but A lot of people ask, why isn't Jazz in the video as much as me? Mm. And this gets asked every time. Why is that? Well, it's just, you know. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Answer I'll, the question. That's, what, that's exactly why, because I'm not very good at talking. So yeah, after this tip-top beach, we're going to try and find a lighthouse now, which again is called Straffy Point Lighthouse, same as the Straffy Beach here. I don't know where it is. No we haven't got way. signal, so this one could not work out particularly great. So we're going. To, we're going to have a look. So we've got a slight change of plan. Uh, we've drove down this windy road, end of public road, no vehicles beyond this point. Uh, and the main sticking point, no dogs. It says, please do not take your dog beyond this point. Oh no, there's a horse shagging another horse. Oh, it's not. This is what I have to put up with on a basis of uh, Well, you know hours. what? You've so you've got a dog, you're probably gonna have to leave it if you wanna go and see the lighthouse. I'll be honest, the lighthouse looks great and it's on the edge of this sheer cliff bit of headland overlooking the sea um, but all the lighthouses we've seen look exactly the same they're kind of white with this yellow edge into them so yeah if you're into lighthouses crack on uh, we're just going to turn back around I think and head on to our next destination which is the town of Tong yeah uh, that's where we're camping for the night so we'll hit back on the road and see where we end up
The drive from Staffy to Tong takes around 40 minutes and you'll see some more of the Scottish Highlands' very best views along the way. As soon as we arrived at the campsite, the weather took a turn for the worse, so we got set up and called it a day. So good morning, it's day five and we're here at Tong campsite and it's a windy one this morning. Uh, the van was rocking last night. Not for the reasons that you're probably thinking. The wind was absolutely battering us and it's a cold wind. The van says it's seven degrees, it probably feels more like three. And we're feeling pretty sorry for the people in the tent. Um, yeah, we're right on the seafront, so we're getting battered from the northerly sea winds. So glad to get back on the road. And um, we're headed in west in the direction of Durness. We're gonna stop at Smoo Cave. That's the first stop of the day. And yeah, let's get back on it. We've moved up from Smoo Cave, it is about a mile up the road, and we're now at Sango Sands campsite, uh, which I know in the sort of the busier season is a really popular one. Uh, you can't book ahead, I don't think, so you've got to get here fairly early, which we've done today. Managed to jump on an electric pitch, which we were a bit worried. We've been having electric pitches along the way just because we don't have any form of heating other than the fan, the electric fan heater, and it has been a bit nippy the past couple of nights. We would probably do without it, but it's useful. There's also a nice beach down the way called Balakanil, I think it's called. So we're gonna go and check that out. Um, but this area, I mean, the drive today has been the best drive so far. Like, it feels like the North Coast 500 is just getting warmed up as we went sort of along the Northeast coast and as we're heading west, it just gets better and better and better. One of the best drives you'll probably ever do. I mean, we've been to Iceland and some other like unbelievable countries, but this scenery, it's mind blowing. Slight change of plan. Uh, we got our pitch down at the campsite. We we're gonna walk down to the beach. Instead, we've drove up to this place that sells cheese toasters at the side of the road, and they look absolutely incredible. And there's also this uh, laundrette machine device at the side of the road. This is like pretty much the halfway point of the NC500. So by the time you get here, you've probably got some dirty washing, so we're gonna stick some in whilst we eat our cheese toasty. Archie, what would you give that toasty out of 10? Woof, if it was 10 out of 10. <laughs> yeah, 10 out of 10 for the toasty. Yeah. Good morning from Sango Sands here in the northwest of Scotland. Was that good? Yeah. I don't know what accent that was. Yeah. Good morning. That's that's like, like, is that Scottish? That's like Edinburgh. -ish. Oh. I've discovered on this trip that I've got about five um, different Scottish accents. I don't know how to differentiate, I don't know how to swap between them. But yeah, they just come and go. So good morning. It's a pretty nice morning actually. The sun's out, which makes a change. We've been waking up to hail and wind and all sorts. Uh, we got a full day of activities today. We've got beach ball, 
beach what ball, ping pong at 11, water aerobics water at 12, <laughs> and bingo at 9 by the pool. So we're going to get back on the road and we've got a few stop offs, some waterfalls, some bridge, maybe some bridge, a couple of waterfalls, uh, a bridge that people rave on about and uh, a nice castle. So we will see where the journey takes us. Apologies for the greasy hair. Uh, it's been a couple of days since I've had a shower. But we are here at the Carlescu or Kilescu Palscu Bridge, which is that bridge behind. If you're into architecture, I guess it's a nice bridge. But the main thing about this place is the scenery. It is just mind blowing. I say mind blowing a lot on this trip, but I think this one warrants it. See all the massive mountains in the background. We've got big mountains here. Obviously, this. Uh, this river slash lot below. Not sure exactly what it is, but it is just so cool, man. So just a few miles from the bridge, uh, we just crossed over. We pulled up at this lock. Uh, I'll put the name of it on the screen because I, I wouldn't have a clue how you pronounce it. Um, but we've come to find the Weeping Widow Waterfall, which is something Jazz spotted on Instagram yesterday. I don't think we would have originally come here, but it looked pretty epic. So we're just making some soup now for some lunch because we're starving. And then we're gonna go and try and find the waterfall. Oh, there might be some crackers involved too. So we've just left that uh, waterfall. We're heading to the Drumbeg viewpoint, which is apparently a nice viewpoint over some islands in the sea. So yeah, I mean that this is, like I say, really windy, but the views are just magnifico. Happy days, end of day six on the North Coast 500 adventure and we're here at Ardmere Holiday Centre. Uh, it's just a bit of a campsite really on the sea. But we're just outside the town of Oolapool, which is a nice little town on the sea. We're gonna go down there tomorrow and have a little explore around. But for now, we're just having a couple of beers. We're gonna cook some food and just kick back for the rest of the night. So we thought we were actually signing off for the day with a couple of bevies. And we've still got a couple of babies. Uh, but yeah, we're just sat here watching the sunset, like everybody else on this campsite. It's just epic, very epic. And then all we hear is this, woo, yeah, woo, loads of hollering and shit up on the mountain, which is a good 300 meters up that way. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna fly a drone up there and see what's going on. So as you'll see on the drone footage, there's a party of about <laughs> 10 people up there. And as I flew the drone over, they obviously saw it and they were buzzing for it. And there's like two or three of them getting their arse out. So. <laughs> and in Scotland, do what the locals do. Get your ass out, mate. Good fun. Never a dull day.
when you're around Scotland, mate. Ah, quality. Unbelievably, it's day seven on our North Coast adventure. It feels like we've been away for weeks. I don't know about you, Zaz. It's just, like it's a weird, we're in a, the weird Scottish time warp. Anyway, uh, today is a good morning. Uh, I've had a shower, so everything is right in the world. Uh, today we're going to go visit uh, Ullapool, the little town slash village on the seafront, just a couple of miles down the road from here where we're staying. If you're after a bit more of a lively town with a few pubs and restaurants along the journey, that's probably your place you want to stop off at or try and stay. There is a campsite there, we couldn't get in on that one. Plenty of hotels and B&Bs in the area, so we're going to head down there. We're hoping for some breakfast, but it's a Sunday, so I don't think the cafes are going to be open might have to settle for a boots meal deal i don't know why i was saying this because we've bought loads of like breakfast ingredients like toast cereal beans beans on toast spaghetti hoops on toast noodles on toast that's not a breakfast item so yeah we're going to head into the town and then we're going to head to another set of waterfalls can you believe it shock horror and a couple of other places along the journey so yeah day seven Feeling re-energised. Jazz, are you ready? Aye, aye, Captain. So we've just discovered that Archie's got the same fear of heights as me. Just walked across that suspension bridge and uh, the drop off is pretty uh, pretty scary. And poor Archie's spreading his little paws and his little toes and getting low to the ground. I'm walking like a crab. Quality. Proper scared, bless him. Place. certain that's a wrap on our waterfalls part of this north coast 500 trip I, i'm pretty outstanding by the amount of waterfalls that scotland has got i mean we've been to places like iceland and the philippines and they're known for like world-class waterfalls but some of the ones here are definitely on a par in yeah. their own way absolutely so yeah i mean like Isn't even if better? even if, if you're not into waterfalls then that's fine, you ain't got to be into them, but they're still worth stopping off on the way. 100% definitely worth a little Instagram flick. And uh, yeah. Welcome to the wee campsite. And it is a wee campsite. I think there's about room for maybe eight camper vans and a mini pitch for tents just behind us. We're at Loch Caron, 
Uh, it's not Karen as in going to speak to the manager Karen it's C-A-R-R-O-N and uh, yeah it's a, a big lock with a, a nice glen to the side loads of mountains as picturesque as anywhere you want to be in the highlands uh, that we've experienced so far so I think we're going to go and grab some pub grub from the pub down the road and bed down for the night happy days Good morning, it's day eight on our adventure across the north of Scotland and uh, I was just saying to Jazz, we've woke up and it's raining. It's not a problem because it's Scotland, you expect it. But most places that you might go or you might live in, you look outside when it's raining and think, this place is pretty much a shithole. Whereas in Scotland when it rains, it, basically the parts we've been to, you look at the rain and you think, wow, it actually adds something to this dramatic landscape very poetic for a monday morning wow. anyway last night we had a absolutely banging meal down at the hotel lock Karen hotel the restaurant was really lovely and they were really friendly and they let dogs in nice down to earth people what we like we even got invited to a music gig down the road but down the road in scotland He's not down the road. Well, it it is down the road, but down the road could be 10 miles. uh, And once you have a few bevies, you can't drive. So, anyway, today we're going to finish off the last bit of the North Coast 500. Now, normally people would have carried on the route we were going yesterday to Applecross and then come across the Balaknabar Pass and then headed back towards Inverness, and that would have been the route finished. Instead of turning right to Applecross, we've come to the Wee Campsite here on Loch Garren and then we're gonna basically go back head over the Blacknabar Pass down to Applecross come back the way so we're gonna do it twice in a day I'm sure people might think we're a bit stupid for doing that but we'll soon find out and then we're gonna head over to the Isle of Skye to continue our journey in the Highlands of Scotland so yeah the Blacknabar Pass is one of them windy single track roads with a lot of passing points meant to be pretty difficult to drive if you've got a big big wagon or caravan or something like that so yeah we will continue on this epic road trip Said it right, Sounds it? like you're saying us casting a spell. We're on the top of the Bilaknibar Pass and uh, I don't think my mum would really enjoy this <laughs> one bit. I'm going to advise my old man to drive around it one day. I think she would be at a wit's end with these roads. Uh, to say they're overlooking a steep cliff on the one side would be a little bit of an understatement but we're doing all right. I think we've just got over the the weird snaky bit that you see on all the Instagram photos. And now we're in the clouds. And we're literally in the clouds. <laughs> uh, I'll get out in a second and show you, but yeah, uh, I it's feel super cool. Very sick. Jazz feels a bit hungover and sick from a wine. That's Not nice. the best road to drive after you've enjoyed no. a few. No, if you've had a few the night before, I'd probably avoid this road to be honest. But uh, yeah, I'm enjoying it. Archie's enjoying it in the back. It's just Jazz that isn't. So yeah, what a good day. So welcome to the majestic Isle of Skye. Uh, we just crossed over the bridge 
hit a bit of uh, traffic and roadworks, which was inconvenient. But we've just turned this bend, and you see this massive mountain landscape with big angry clouds, raining in some places, not raining in others, and this pretty epic waterfall by the side of the road. So I said we weren't going to stop at any more waterfalls, but this was unplanned, so I'm not counting that one. Uh, we're not in the camper van tonight. We've got two nights in some glamping pods right at the north of Sky. So we're going to have a drive there. Uh, it's going to be nice to get out of the van for a couple of nights, I think. Maybe. We'll see. Then we'll see you at the glamping pods. We're here at our accommodation for the night. And wow, we're in for a treat. I'm not dissing the camper van. But uh, yeah, a little bit of space, a little bit of luxury. I'm going to go and give you a guided tour so you can see what we're working with. But Archie's in his element. We're like right near the sea. There's loads of sheep about. Pretty, pretty good. Let's go and have a look. So we've got a lovely sofa bed slash couch here. Nice double bed. Microwave, sink, cooker, hob, etc. TV with Wi-Fi because there's absolutely no signal here. There's a Bluetooth system. Oh. Nice toilet, shower. We are absolutely made up here. This is a nice bit of luxury. Hello, what's your name then? I'm sure you had a name. Was it Alfie? Archie's got him snookered here. Shortly after arriving at the pods, we spotted what we believe to be a white-tailed eagle, the UK's largest bird of prey. So good morning, um, we're still in the pod, we had a good night's kit last night, the bed was really comfy, Jazz finally got a shower, um, wow, that makes her sound like she's never had a washed shower. Washed my hair? Jazz has washed her hair for the first time in what feels like 30 days and 30 nights, but it's looking glossy and glowing and glamorous this morning. Oh my. So yeah, we've been wanting to come to Sky for a while, we've, we've seen quite a lot of it online, some like really cool photos. And the drive up here yesterday was pretty, pretty epic. It's just really rugged landscape with a lot of cliffs, a lot of funny shaped mountains. Um, it's really exposed to the elements and it really reminded us of Iceland. So we're looking forward today to getting out, getting the camera out, getting the dog out. We're all rested, so we're ready to go and explore what looks like a pretty incredible island. Just arrived at the Dunvegan Castle. Uh, this is one of the main stop-off points in the Isle of Skye, and apparently it's the longest inhabited castle in the whole of Scotland. Uh, the MacLeod clan have been living here since 1736 or something like that. Dogs aren't allowed into the actual castle; they're only allowed into sort of like the uh, the gardens. So we're gonna give it a miss. It was like 12 quid each, which is a little bit steep just to walk around some gardens, to be honest. But if you've got kids and you are up this way, it does look pretty cool. Uh, there's a bit of exploring and there's some exhibitions and stuff inside. So yeah, we're gonna move on to the lighthouse now. <laughs> So we are at our second stop of the day. This is the Nice uh, Lighthouse and Viewpoint. When you first park up here, you can't actually see it because of how it's located beyond the big rock. So if you go up to the right, you can see it. Or if you follow the path, I think there's a bit of a walk down, um, but there's a steep descent and then obviously a steep descent on the way back. So we didn't bother with that. We just went to the side, took some photos, flew the drone and happy days. 
Archie loved it, he always loves getting out of the van. If we've been in the car for any longer than like 10 or 20 minutes, he just goes mad. And anyway, right on cue, that's the water boiling. We're gonna have either a pot noodle or... Big pasta. Big, big pasta. So yeah, a bit of lunch, and then we'll get back on the road. Shut up! And uh, move on to the next place. But yeah, really impressed with that lighthouse. Definitely worth a stop off. So we can both we can both confirm that the big pasta pot thing was pretty rubbish. Jazzy's smelt and tasted like feet. Mine smelt and tasted like sweaty bacon. Feet. Feet. <laughs> <laughs> Not good. So we've made the journey from the lighthouse place via Portree, which is the main city here in Sky. It's not really a city, it's a village or town. Uh, quite picturesque, worth a, a stop off. I've got a nice little photo there. And we've stopped at probably the most iconic place in the Isle of Sky, which is the Old Man of Store. Pretty unique rock formation. You'd have probably seen it on, on the telly maybe or some photos or whatnot. So I'm gonna go for a quick walk up towards them. I don't know how far I'm gonna get, but there is a full hike you can do here and you can extend it for hours and hours if you're into hiking. I'm gonna put my walking boots on and go have a little look. So yeah, that was the hike up the Old Man of Store. Uh, it was quite difficult in the end, just a bit steep, and I was going quite quick just to get up there. Uh, I went to the base of where like the main stacks, the main rocks were, and to appreciate the whole, you know, dramatic scenery and stuff, you had to go a lot further up, maybe another half an hour. Yeah, if you only get halfway, and you can't be asked to go the rest of the way, don't worry, just turn back around and you'll get wicked views, as long as the weather's good. Normally it's quite cloudy and misty and moody, Today it's been quite sunny, so you've got quite good visibility. Anyway, Jazz has just been for a piss. I've got me can of Diet Coke, and we're off to the next gaff, <coughs> which is the me. the meat cliffs or something. M milt, milt. I don't know, but we're going there. Have you seen your dog? He's <laughs> just chilling. Rock with a kill. There you go. Milt Falls slash Kilt Rock um, is literally a few miles up the road from the Old Man of Store and it's a waterfall that goes off the cliff into the sea. Uh, it's meant to look like a kilt because it's a 60 meter high cliff, halfway down is basalt and halfway down the rest of it is a different type of rock so it looks like it's wearing a kilt. Yeah there's a lot of Chinese tourists here today, uh, they seem to be following us around taking photos of Jazz like the celebrity that she is around these parts known well in the Isle of Sky. Probably oh ginger person. That's <laughs> so, yeah. Scottish. <laughs> so we are now moving on to we've got one more stop. So right now I'm just walking down to Staffing Beach on the Isle of Sky and uh, this is where you can actually see fossils of dinosaurs and their footprints. I don't think I'm going to find them today because I've come when it's high tide and I think they're kind of in like the rock pools and stuff. But yeah, apparently 166 million years ago there was dinosaurs here. Incredible. Archie, your mate's here. Alright. Good boys. He's wagging. Well, he's always been a bit submissive. Oh. Good boys. Oh, that's it. Bye.
See ya. Well done, Archie. You told him. Good morning. Archie, Rob and Jazz join you here from the Fladiggery Pods. Um, we're going to check out now. We've been here two nights and it's been nice just to get a bit of luxury. A bit more space than the camper van, so really enjoyed it. Um, we'll put a link below because it's a really cool place if you want to come to Sky and stay. Um, so yeah, we're leaving Sky today. We've got a couple more places to visit on the island before we move off. And then we're heading off to Glencoe, back on the mainland in Scotland. Right, so we've just finished at the uh, ferry pools and we've driven to the Talisca Distillery, which is the only distillery for whiskey in the whole of Sky, and it's quite famous and there's some pretty pricey stuff in there. We've just had a quick walk around the little visit centre and the shop, bought a wee uh, bottle of whiskey, and now we're going to get a coffee and hit the road because we've got like 130 miles, something like that, to go to the next place. So we're heading to Fort William. So yeah. It'll be a long drive, a couple of hours I think, but we should be okay. So it's taken us about two and a half hours, but we've arrived at the campsite for the night, which is just outside Fort William. It's called Glen Nevis uh, campsite. And literally just in front of us, we can see Ben Nevis. So we're gonna get set up here for the night and then tomorrow at 10 a.m. we've gotta catch our train. So if there's any Harry Potter fans watching, you'll definitely recognize a couple of the places we're heading. So yeah, should be interesting, should be exciting. We're here at the Glencoe camping and caravan in tight. Um, we're just settling down to a barbie, sorting through our stuff and making a plan for tomorrow. It's been a long day, it's weird. I haven't been in the van that much driving, but I feel equally as tired. Well, yeah, it's been a pretty good day, something a bit different. And tomorrow we're going to do a bit of exploring around Glencoe. Yeah, almost at the end of the trip. And uh, if yeah. you're happy and you know it, Archie Woof. <laughs> Uh, this morning we're going to get packed up, we've had our last night in the van, um, we're going to head, head across Glencoe, get a couple of photos, go to a couple of cool places and if you're a James Bond fan then you need to keep watching. So we've just parked up, um, probably about 10-20 minutes from the campsite just around the corner of Glencoe and I'm looking at a pyramid pointy type mountain um, with some waterfalls 
which is called Etive Moor Waterfalls, one of the most photographed uh, mountains and waterfalls in the whole of the UK, I'd probably say. Uh, it's just really picturesque, the mountains like almost symmetrical, just looks epic. So, me and Archer had a little walk from the car, it's literally about 100 yards from where you can park the car, and uh, yeah, gonna get some nice photos hopefully. So we jumped back in the van and drove, what, about three miles and we've pulled in at this little pulling stop on the Glen Eteve Road. So I'm a fan of the James Bond films, so a lot of the settings for Skyfall were set around Glencoe, Glen Eteve, places like that. And there's one specific shot that's pretty iconic where he stood next to Judy Dench uh, looking down the road, on the road to his house uh, in the Glen in Scotland. So we've just recreated that moment. Archie was Judy Dench and I was Daniel Craig. I've just lived 007 for one second of my life. What yeah, did you think? Absolutely buzzing, I'm James Bond, mate. Are you? Yeah. Do you want to see my and weapon? Archie's Judy. What's Judy it? Archie's Judy Dench. I'm Daniel Craig. If you're a fan of James Bond, you have to come to here and get your photo because it's just cool, man. So here's what's going on. We were meant to be going to another place, which is about an hour from here, but we've just really enjoyed this glen and the weather, so we've decided to pull in. Got the beer Moretti out, Choo Choo, which is ice cold, it's been in the fridge. So we're just gonna have some lunch here for a bit, admire the incredible views up the mountain, and then we're gonna head off to Edinburgh. So one thing I must mention, throughout this trip, there has been talk of a fine delicacy that I've never eaten before. One that Jazz so happens to be a professor, a cuisine master of cooking said dish. Is this true? Mm -hmm. And the dish in question is super noodles on toast. So I think right now that is what's going to happen in this incredible location. We should bless it with such a fine feast. Fine feast for the eyes and a fine feast for the belly. Happy, happy days. Mm -hmm. 